Okay, um, quick demo of um, the IDP SSO configuration. Um, so I got configured here is admin SSO um, and user SSO. Now the names need to be different. It won't allow you to configure two identical names. Um, both are used in the same single sign-on URL, my Shibboleth server. Um, um, you have to have a unique entity ID. Um, however, the entity ID needs to be correct for the admin one. We are checking the, the entity ID in the response for admin SSO, but the, um, the entity ID in the response for, I, for the user SSO is not being checked. This is the user SSO because it says sign in disabled, meaning um, quite bizarrely that um, that single sign on for admin and single sign on for admin is enabled on, on this one here. Um, so I've got a, uh, a SAML trace running here so we can see the, 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 the results. So if I verify single sign on for this one, um, all working correctly. Um, and we can see back here in the uh, in the post data, um, here is um, my entity ID there, Shibboleth, uh, IDP2 Shibboleth, which is matching this one up here. Um, and obviously the issuer and all the certificate. Uh, and then uh, the name ID coming through um, in the response. Um, so then let's uh, let's clear that one. Um, the same for the, uh, the, the the user attributes. That's all importing correctly. Huh. How interesting! Import channel. Uh, access. Why is that doing that? The response is all correct. This seems to be something. Let's go back here and try that again. There's a bug there. Quite weird. Um, there we go. It's important all the information. All fine. So that's uh, SP initiated on both of those. Um, the other obvious one is is what happens when I log in uh, with the user um, through Zscaler app. So uh, the the ZIA SSO is happening here and the ZPA SSO is happening here. Um, and uh, of course, then I am signed in correctly. Um, so I ping from DC2 uh, and get to my domain controller and I can uh, remote control onto it. And then we can see here in the request, there is my, uh, there is a request, that's the, the one I've just made um, to my domain controller. So um, user SSO for the, for the app is working fine um, as well. And then um, just to prove the other one, let me just come over here, get my proper URL. Um, uh, SP, uh, IDP initiated SSO, the provider URL, um, the relay state. I'm not sure why we need relay state to be quite honest, but um, there we go. Uh, and the, the, the SSO is happening there. Um, obviously that IDP initiated if I sign out um, and actually do it this way. Just to go back and uh, uh, filter. Um, that's the uh, where are we? That's the the, the user the the um, SP initiated again. Um, this one here is the the IDP initiated. We've got the relay state, um, and that's all working. So the, the the checking of the entity ID seems to have disappeared um, which is which is kind of fine um, the odd thing being if I come back here let me um, let me go back here and go to my IDP configuration
function. Um, let's actually create these um, from scratch. Delete. No, let's delete this one. Delete. Um, and then go add an IDP configuration. Let me Im import my my metadata. Now it's instantly taking the um, the wrong uh, metadata URL, uh, URL there. There are there are several bindings in the file. Um, Here are the here are the, the bindings, um, and the one that we actually want is that's the one that's the auth n that it's taken the first one, and what we want is the post binding, which is which is this one. Um, potentially, I could just simply update the metadata. Um, I'm going to call this one my admin IDP config. Now, if I change the the, the service provider entry on here because I do need to have entity uniqueness across our configurations. Um, this is obviously admin SSO. Um, let's save that one. Um, and then we add the user um, configuration. Um, let's change that URL. And that's the unique one. Uh, no, I'm sorry, user. Click save on this. So now, really, I've just flipped around these entity IDs. Um, if I do a verify single sign-on now, it's going to fail. Uh, it doesn't get anywhere. Um, if I uh, do that um, IDP-initiated SSO, that's going to fail. We're going to actually get an error. Um, if I try and... Uh, uh, it here uh, as you'd expect that one fails um, but um, this this one here imports some attributes for the user one um, that's going to continue and that's going to work fine yeah. might be the same error with that probably because my session is uh, messed up would be the reason IDP configuration um, there we go some attributes are working okay um, and then um, This is going to work. Make sure it's disconnect that one. Yeah, definitely get that one. Domain controller. Sign in there. Um, and uh, and there's my my c c connection again. So. The, the, the bottom line is that this IDP configuration, um, the entity ID has to be correct on the admin IDPS, the admin uh, configuration. It does not need to be correct on the user one. Um, although I do think that we should support them being the same. Um, and then obviously um, the fact that it's it's selecting the wrong um, sign in URL on the uh, um, from the metadata and um, that you need to change the name I think a default name would be useful there as well hopefully that was useful